Hello, my name is Suhyun Park, a research fellow in the School of Materials Science and Engineering in Nanyang Technological University. I'm honored to receive this year's Woman in Science and Technology Award and to have an opportunity to present my research in 2021 Asia Korea Conference. Also, I'd like to thank the Korean Scientists and Engineers Association in Singapore for this great pleasure. I've started my journey of research in Singapore during the undergraduate exchange program and internship that I've participated in NTU. Um, together with Professor Nam Jun Cho, I've joined quite initial stage of pollen-based drug delivery research. The next coming years, I've um, received a bachelor's degree from Seoul National University with the final year project um, preparing hydrogel bio ink for 3D printing applications. Then I came straight back to NTU to start the PhD in the same year and finish the thesis and defense last year finally and started the postdoctoral research this year. So during my PhD, my research scope can be divided like followings. Um, antiviral peptide engineering, lipid model membranes, and the biomaterials. I really wish I could go over one by one um, because they are quite related to each other and they are very interesting projects. But I will focus on my main project, um, antiviral peptide engineering, for this talk. The infectious diseases are the diseases caused by living organisms such as bacteria or viruses. Um, not all organisms are harmful to your body. In fact, they are quite necessary for your microbiome. But nevertheless, there are emerging and re-emerging uh, viruses causing global or local pandemics, meaning that the viruses can be totally new like SARS-CoV-2 but also all viruses can pop up again and cause the diseases. The major types can be respiratory viral infections, including SARS-CoV-1 and 2, are viral infections caused by the bites of infected insects, such as mosquitoes and ticks. Um, there are also like well-known viruses, um, uh, like flabby viruses, such as dengue, West Nile, Zika or yellow fever viruses that can be included in these types. Also, different animals can be the source, um, like bats. So the different uh, the diseases, um, those diseases can be uh, fatal, like Ebola virus infection, but also may cause chronic diseases, uh, such as ACV and HIV infection. As we could have witnessed from COVID-19, the development of uh, the treatment or vaccine can be time consuming and it could, uh, actually it is, it is serving our life entirely. And here, um, that's why we need to focus that there is a common target in all of these um, major viral epidemics causing viruses, that they are um, membrane enveloped viruses The viral envelope is the layer um, coating the, oh, sorry, coating the outside um, of the viruses. They are made from lipid bilayer membrane, looking like this, um, forming continuous barrier around the particles or um, even our cell membranes. So the traditional antiviral treatments um, target they target proteins. Um, these methods may cause the mutated variants of viruses and cause the emergence um, of mm, drug resistant virus strains. Uh, however, the targeting, the structural component of lipid bilayer do not have that kind of risk because the lipids are not encoded in the viral genome. 
viruses obtain their outer coatings of this membrane um, from the host cellular membrane. Um, furthermore, this strategy uh, is broad spectrum, meaning that it's effective against multiple types of viruses because the majority of viral epidemics were by membrane enveloped viruses like we've seen here before. So here comes an important question that how to control the selectivity uh, of those antiviral agents. Mm, there were several ways to disrupt the membrane, for example, targeting specific component of lipid or um, by inserting a foreign molecular, small molecule to disturb the uh, structural integrity of the membrane or it can be um, insert, inserting a foreign materials, but they lysis the membrane. So, but they, now the most, the common thing here is that all of these methods might also cause harm to our cell membranes as well. So in order to evaluate and optimize this property, the biophysical um, approach comes in handy. The lipid envelope um, antiviral disruption strategy lead can be um, tested by lipid model membranes because the architectural characteristics of viral membranes that can be closely mimicked by the small size lipid vesicles or liposomes based on um, tuning the drug properties, the um, certain drugs can be further engineered and more optimized by systematically evaluating the properties of them. So here are the uh, certain types of other membranes. The complex biological membranes like this, like including the whole proteins and other ligands and all, um, can be simplified in a single or multiple components of lipids to model the biophysical properties of the biological membrane. So for instance, we can model the small viral particles ranging like less than 100 nanometers like SARS-CoV-2 with a similar size of um, surrounded spherical lipid vesicles like this. On the other hand, this structure can be also planar, reducing the membrane curvature by forming the, this bilayer structure on the surface, like here. So here is our um, lead alpha helical peptide that is derived from the N-terminus of the HCV non-structural protein 5A. So like all other alpha helicopeptides, H peptide also have this hydrophobic side and hydrophilic side, which is amphipathic. And it was, it was surprisingly actually discovered while studying the interaction of these short peptides from the virus um, and membranes that this AH peptide can lysis the absorbed lipid vesicles. So this data um, interpretation uh, evaluated by surface sensing technology, such as um, in the previous platform like here, definitely gave us some um, information that the AH peptide can function um, as to, to rupture the vesicles. But this kind of um, measurement is like, yeah, very, very beneficial, but also this interpretation for uh, detailed kinetics uh, involving the simultaneous change of the absorbed layers and vesicles, um, those multiple steps of pore formation and um, this restructured lipid membranes on surface is, um, challenging due to these convoluted signals and the lipids and agents mess. So like this accompanying um, all the dynamic events of membrane permeabilization and lysis and um, aggregation, those can be uh, not so straightforward to interpret. So, 
So that's why we also developed a platform called the Tether Lipid Vesicle. So this, um, so this platform closely mimic the lipid envelope of the viruses um, as like in the previous uh, model membranes. But also this vesicle is not observed on the surface, but it is tethered such that it maintains its like um, bit flexible um, barrier of the membrane or by um, floating on the surface. And while modeling the structural component, we can label those um, two different parts of the vesicles. Um, namely one is um, this green dye in, in internal, the green dye calcine is encapsulated inside the vesicles and the membrane embedded rhodamine dye, the red um, in here in short term rhodamine PE, it's lipid, labeled lipid red dye um, to track the reduction of the fluorescent fluorescence intensity caused by the membrane disruption. So the calcine can um, go out or can be disturbed mainly by, um, by the pore formation. Um, if the antiviral agent like AH peptide form pores here, then the green dye will go out and then you will see the abrupt reduction of the um, signal sooner then the reduction of the red dye, which will be caused by the lysis of the membrane. In here, um, the most importantly, uh, the quantification of vesicle size is also possible in this platform, which wasn't um, in, in the previous um, platforms, such as like surface observed vesicles or uh, vesicles in a bulk solutions. So this quantification works by correlating the fluorescence intensity and the vesicle diameter obtained from the conventional measurements. So in short, by obtaining the thousands of vesicles, um, this is just only one shot, but at the one at one measurement, we will, we will take like um, six or eight or even tens of different uh, locations such that you will gather uh, thousands of um, individual vesicles data such that you will collect the statistics, then you can individually track um, which particles are behaving in uh, which way. For instance, here, the small one uh, is decreasing, decreasing, but if you observe the big one and small one together, then you will see that it's gradually decreasing. And if it gets even bigger, then you will see negligible changes here. So this approach um, was very useful during the interrogation of AH peptides um, uh, and antiomers as well, because those are, um, this L form and D form of isomeric peptides, um, they, they are in a chiral form like a mirror image. So they might behave in similar way, but we found out that the AHD peptide in fact has like quicker response to the red dye, which means um, it can lysis the vesicles like sooner than AHL, which means that it's more potent. So if you go deep into the individual vesicle sizes, for example, here, the small like one dot it represents uh, uh, individual vesicles, then you see that AHD, um, oh, this final normalized FI meaning is that the, uh, it's the later stage of the fluorescence intensity. So if it's, it's reduced um, enough, compared to the initial fluorescence intensity, then it will be deemed as um, it's, it's ruptured. So this rupture efficiency indicates clearly that AHD is more potent in a, this kind of size range compared to AHL peptide. On the other hand, the melitin, which is another classic type of um, antimicrobial peptide, didn't show any um, those size dependent um, uh, behavior when it has a lower 
concentration, then it will just um, generally not rupture any. And if it's sufficiently high, then it will just indiscriminately just rupture all the size ranges of the vesicles. So this was um, another example. And um, yeah, this will be another example. Um, so this study was about comparing two closely related peptides, um, starting from the structural analysis to evaluation of their functional activities, such that we can systematically unravel later what kind of structural differences may have driven the distinctive membrane activity. First, the secondary structural characterization was performed by circular dichroism, which is a classic way. And we could find that, of course, um, those since they are similar in the sequence um, from the helical field, we can see that uh, both are amphipathic. Um, also, in from the from the just normal buffer stage, uh, when you when when we teeter, uh, when you add the lipid like ratio by ratio, we increased. Then we could see that AH peptide um, increased its helicity um, by about like thirty percent. On the other hand, this another type of peptide um, increased like a lot more with a lower ratio of the um, peptide and lipid, which which is um. Uh, conferring that the magnitude of this helicity change may provide insight. Then continuing with the single vesicle, tethered vesicles um, platform, we could clearly see the C5A um, from the lower concentration. It is potent within like 10 minutes, it can rupture all the size range, all the range of size of vesicles. Um, on the other hand, the 10 nanometer, uh, 10, 10 nanomolar AH peptide concentration did not disturb the um, membrane lysis, um, did not cause the membrane lysis, only caused the pore formation over here. And when the size ranges more than 125 nanometer, that was the cutoff that um, we just made. Um, it was also distinctive that AH peptide, yeah, it doesn't doesn't um, disturb the structure, but it only forms a pore, which means that the pore formation, the um, extent of the pore formation, wasn't enough to um, entirely lyse this the membrane. So this is the statistical quantification of the data, and we could see that yeah, C five A um in both. In all the ranges, almost hundred percent, um, it could rupture all. So it, this means that it might be um more toxic compared to AH peptide when it is administered in the human body or just human cells, any cells, which is bigger than the virus particles. So kinetic profiles also um, uh, gives us similar. Um, results. Uh, the interesting part over here is that AH peptide and um, the topper one up above is the AH peptide and the uh, below is C5A. Yeah, so you can clearly see that the pore formation happens um, on the prior to the membrane lysis. The green one is the calcine. So it means that uh, AH peptide uh, definitely forms pore first rather than. Um, Lysing the the membrane first, but C5A the most of the um, behavior it just happened in the similar time frame, which means that um it's more C5A is definitely more potent, and also the vesicle sizes didn't matter. It doesn't discriminate, and and um yeah it might be um toxic. So in order to test that in biophysical way. Uh, we also introduced the uh, different types of model membrane. So previously it was a spherical type of a range, ranging like 100 nanometers size of the vesicles. 
here it will be planner actually not so planner because it's tethered um it's a bit fluctuating on the on the, on the surface but it's tethered uh, supported by uh, small portions of um, long chain lipids um so here it can mimic um not just like it's not virus particle but it can be representative to the lower curvature of membrane which means a bigger size of the membrane like our human cells so in here if we introduce the ah peptide concentration like in an increasing manner and then the in the same range of concentration we can see that ah peptide like it's a bit minimum uh, whereas the 5 a um could induce like um a lot more um, behavior activity than AH peptide, which means that it can really disturb the cell membrane. And uh, in the later stage, uh, we just, um, oh yeah, did a structural modeling to explain more which kind of um, structural component has really affected on uh, that kind of behavior. This kind of information is important uh, because if we know which um, parts of amino acids or even like structural um, differences, if we know that, that means we can tune the um, activity of the antiviral peptides, similar to the previous example with the L and D isomer forms of AH peptide. Um, for example, we could um, truncate the AH peptide in these small, small, small pieces and then test whether um, which part was actually responsible for the activities or, um, or we can just um, point mutate like single amino acids to um, track what kind of amino acid play which kind of role. So in here, we just um, uh, concluded that the AH peptide and C5A, the major difference is, of course, um, AH peptide is longer um, because of the front and the back part, but also the middle part here has smaller um, tendency to form fully helical peptide, um, which um, is a good sign or uh, because maybe this is the reason why um, it can be selectively forming pores and rupture only small vesicles compared to the big ones. So we are still on the stage of um, more optimizing and make um, and studying more variants of the peptides. And I think it's a really good um, uh, research project to just unravel like what kind of um, this structural and activity relationship there will be and to use this um, outcome to design and engineer the drugs the next topic is a bit different, uh, is a bit of different application compared to the previous one, but also fun, um, such that it can be definitely included here. It should be. Yeah, um, this um, project was to form the clusters, vesicle clusters, which is um, mimicking the um, viral particle clusters, because um, since they are like small, small particles, so that if they are in the in your body, if it is introduced, then they don't like um, behave in a in a single single way. Like mostly, um, they will be um, clustered together, such that they will display the greater infectivity um, compared to the individual viral particles alone. So, if you want to test whether these um, certain drugs can um, can also uh, this uh, can also lysis or disturb the membrane of the cluster, then then it will be also good news to be applied in that kind of um, application. So here, like the conventional one that I've done, um, you've seen in the previous slides, and this one is the patterned um, platform with the um, this certain array of the vesicles. And then we evaluated the um, AH peptide 
like how it will interact and um as expected or uh, surprisingly or like actually in a very good news that it worked very well um so definitely the pore formation yeah in this um density of the clusters age peptide worked really well but of course when it gets like a lot more so this vesicle density was controlled by the neutrabidin um, concentration, which is the uh, tether anchor of the surface, the protein. So the neutrabidin concentration increases, then the um, general time scale of the complete calcium release or the um, membrane lysis increases, of course. And if it gets like extremely high, then um, they also like can't um, uh, can be effective like entirely, but um, this one can be also resolved by putting more like higher concentration of AH peptide. So it can be also optimized in a um, in a certain way such that it won't be a um, so big issue later. Another um, interesting project that um, that can be um, in a in a consider can can be considered is the quanti um is the consideration of dye liquid and the photo bleaching as these fluorescent dye labels are um um since they are fluorescent you are um giving out a bit of um like excitation energy such that this energy will be um released such that we can see it later so the photo bleaching should occur and it occurs in this platform as well. And I was, uh, at first I was a bit surprised that actually it was a lot because if everything um, that I measured up until like, let's say 20 minutes is, it could have been done to the calcine um, photo bleaching, right? So this should be really interrogated as well. But unfortunately, um, um, the previous examples with the AH peptide or C5A or any others, um, their interaction was um, very, very visible um, before 20 minutes time frame. So even though like you could see that eventually it will drop to zero within 20 minutes, if, if um, there is like very super, super um, short time interval, then, then it might affect, but um, I want to just point out that the previous results were uh, quite easy here, like it actually even here, such that it won't disturb. But, but if the interaction takes like longer, then we need to definitely consider those um, uh, effects. So calcine is like this, and then rhodamine on the other hand, it was very stable. So in the future work, if I just want to track the four formation, then probably um, I can consider switching the dye. Um, yeah, but like red base dye can be in the interior and then um, green dye in the other part, like vice versa, or just one. So that can be also a good idea. And then you need to take it and consider. And the membrane composition also um, affects a lot. Mm, since the calcine dye is um, negatively charged, the DOPS, um, which is also negatively charged, can um, cause the electrostatic interaction against the calcine such that it can um, uh, provide more like longer retention of the dye inside of the vesicle. Also, cholesterol can be incorporated and this um, cholesterol is generally known to make the membranes rigid. So it worked, so since that it increases the membrane rigidity, the dye liquid was also prevented by that. So in which you want to change the membrane composition, then also you need to um, have the basic um, standard baseline to, to um, compare the interaction. So that should be under the consideration, which is an example here. So, this is just normal zwitter ionic um, lipid vesicle, and this is uh, with the um, this is the like maximum um, um, maximally optimized uh, composition 
that can retain the calcane in, in, in the membrane. So as you can see, the, the, the gradient of the change, even though um, there was the same um, AH peptide in, um, injected, um, the behavior is like quite totally different. So uh, yeah, the rate of the change can be different by like 150% and relatively er relative error. So that one, this membrane consideration should be done. Um, yeah, so now it had been 30 minutes and um, yeah, lastly, with this acknowledgement, I need to wrap up my presentation today. I deeply appreciate all of my colleagues, friends and family who supported my journey here. I wish all this pandemic ends soon and bring us back to a normal life again. Thank you for listening and please drop me an email anytime if you have any questions or inquiries. Have a great day.